Hi, I'm Hazel. It is almost Saturday, which makes it time to sit down and catch up with a brand new vlog. First off, I want to start by saying hello to everybody new and welcome. This is a video that I do every Friday talking about the wow news of the week, what I've been up to this week, and I answer viewer questions at the end, or for the second half of it, because you guys have great questions. This week, the raid opened, of course. Old Year opened this week on normal and heroic difficulty, and a big thank you to everybody that watched my raid guides and shouted them out on streams. Um, there was a bit of that going around, people that linked them in their guilds discords. I'm just so thankful to all of you guys for watching them. I put a lot of time into them and that means a whole lot to me. They definitely did a lot better than the last couple sets that I've done, so I appreciate that. My guild this week um, also linked them in the discord. That was really awkward. It's one thing to make a video and put it online, but we would like get to a boss and then the raid lead would set like a three minute break and then link the video in discord and tell everybody to watch it before the fight and they're all watching it while I'm in discord. Gordon, oh. The raid did go fairly smoothly mechanics wise compared to what progression normally is for us so maybe it worked but oh man that was awkward. So we went 7 of 8 normal, we killed Mithrax, we tried Cahoon a couple of times but we only had like a half an hour left in our raid night so we decided to go kill Heroic Talek instead which went a lot better. I only got one piece of loot, no that's not true I got two pieces of loot, I got a cloak. And then I got a weapon, but it's a one hand, and I have to find an offhand before I can wear it so I'm still wearing this 325 staff that I got out of a Heroic. Weapons are hard to get this expansion. It almost feels like they're trying to make us miss artifacts, being like, you remember when you had a guaranteed weapon that was pretty good? Bet you miss those days. My cat really likes chin rubs. This is my cat. The toughest bosses for us were probably Vectus and then Mithrax, and obviously Cahoon because we didn't kill him, but I think Vectus stood us up the most considering how early it was in the instance. Just plague everywhere and we had like a, well this is the side of the room you go if you don't want the thing, and then the blood would get over there and it was just a chaos, but it was really fun. The world bosses opened this week. I actually got a nice set of Azerite shoulders that had really good traits for me and I put them on and I'm like, wow, I can't use any of these traits yet because my Azerite level needed another level before I could use any of the traits, but I had already disenchanted my old shoulders and I didn't really want to go back, so I just wore them anyways without any traits in raid. So that was great. <laughs> I'm feeling a little disappointed or like a medium disappointed with the Azerite system so far. I don't know really what I expected from it, but just actually playing through it in the live game so far doesn't feel great to me. I feel, and maybe I'm just going about it the wrong way, but I feel like I'm being punished for getting gear too quickly. And I don't really feel incentivized to grind out the Azerite traits. Like when I got that piece of gear that was better that I couldn't wear the traits of, I'm just like, well, I guess this sucks until I catch up to the point just through whatever it is I'm doing naturally. I didn't feel a need to go out and do a bunch of Azerite World Quest to try and get that trait, because if I just like chill for a week or two it'll be easier and I'll get it while I'm just doing my emissaries or whatever. So maybe I'm going about it the wrong way, but it this whole system in general feels more punishing than rewarding to me, and it also feels very arbitrary. And then a lot of the top tiered Azerite traits are actually passive traits that don't really change your rotation at all, so for all the talk that they had about you know, instead of a new tier of talents or new abilities, we're going to do these Azerite traits instead. And those will change your rotation and be exciting in the same way legendaries were. I'm not really getting that. And I totally see the need to make whatever new abilities that you add contained within the expansion. Like, that's fine. I just don't think that, for me anyways, um, Azerite is panning out quite the way that it was intended to. And I also don't really know how they can fix it to make it feel better. <laughs> I think it might just be one of those systems that we're just gonna have to see what they do instead next time and hopefully, I don't know, what do you guys think? Maybe I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> The Warfront started this week, that was also new, and by Warfront started, I mean, kind of, you know, the process of Warfront started. I think some people were misunderstanding that, because it wasn't terribly well explained in the lead-up to the expansion, unless you were, like, really looking for info. There's just so much going on in BFA that I feel like it's more easy than ever to miss stuff. So people were expecting to be able to start Warfronts, and were instead like, well, here's some quests if you're Alliance, and I'm assuming Horde has turn ins to do, and nobody can do it yet. So that's going to continue until Horde finishes their turn-ins. That is region-wide, that is not server-wide. And then once the Horde finishes filling up that bar with all of their turn-ins, then they'll be able to do the Warfront and we'll be able to start turning stuff in. And I'm pretty interested to see how that day goes, because my feeling is that the response to Warfronts is going to be pretty underwhelming, just based on the response to things like Island Expeditions so far. Because a Warfront is kind of, kind of like an LFR version of an island expedition, just in the fact that it's PvE, you know, you're in there with pugs that aren't going to be terribly coordinated, and the rewards are a little bit nebulous and not entirely clear. At least with island expeditions, you can lose, you know, you're not gonna, it's not a total waste of time, but there is a failure state there. And warfronts don't have that. With a warfront, you're just fighting, doing PvE stuff until you win. 
And if you suck or if everybody's AFK, that might take a really long time or maybe everybody leaves, but there's no actual losing it. And I feel like that's going to lead to a lot of issues um, in sort of like this pug Elifari style content. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe I am wrong. I hope that I am, but I'm not super looking forward to doing them. What else? In my channel stuff, uh, the merch launched this week, so the Squirrel Squad shirts that I'm wearing now, those are available now. Um, those are going to be available for a while. I also made a mug with that design, um, so those are just on the Teespring store, which should be, I think, under the channel. If not, there's a link somewhere. And then the 100k celebration shirts are available until Wednesday, September the 19th. So those are limited run that's available in a shirt and a pillow. And overall, the response has been really good to those, which is a big relief. I had this, I was so worried that everybody would just hate it. I don't know why I like them. Next week in my channel for videos, I am going to be starting hashing out the TSM guides. I don't want to promise release dates because those things always take longer than I think they're going to take. But I'm also going to be sprinkling in some other miscellaneous WoW videos just because I feel like I've been making guides for 30 years. And I did used to do videos about other WoW stuff on the channel. So I'll be sprinkling some of that in. And then uh, tomorrow is my birthday. I am turning 26 years old tomorrow. I think I'm going to do like a short extra stream. I don't normally stream on Saturdays, but I might stream for like an hour or two tomorrow morning, Saturday morning on September 8th, uh, just to like hang out and play a little bit more WoW and chat with you guys and then go hang out with my husband and do like, maybe we'll get some sushi. I'm probably gonna end up just looking and looking at fish stores at fish that I can't have yet because that's what we do when we go out now. <laughs> we don't really have like a concrete plan if we're just like going out. And fish stores are one of those places where you can often have pets so we can take our dog because we can't leave our dog alone. So we're just always hanging out at, at fish stores, looking at all the fishies. It's like my favorite thing to do. Anyways, questions from this week. Red Quarter asks, would you consider getting a rabbit or a bunny? Seems like that would fit your personality. So growing up as a kid, we had a lot of animals, but we always had a strict no rodents rule. Like my mom didn't want any kind of rodents. So no hamsters, mice, guinea pigs, chihuahuas, <laughs> um, or, or rabbits. So... I just kind of had that internalized into me and I kind of held on to that even after I moved out. And then a roommate that I had that I'm still friends with has a bunny and he's a very cute bunny. But I got to see a little bit more firsthand what it's like taking care of a bunny, especially like inside a house when you don't have a whole lot of yard space. And then I'm just not sure how it works when you have um, like when you have cats. I know people have bunnies with cats because uh, Solid Gold, who's like the, the goldfish YouTuber that I, I love because her goldfish are so cute, also has bunnies and cat and they like cuddle and stuff. But I have to assume that's not normal. <laughs> I don't know how that works, so maybe one day, but I'm trying to rein in my pet dreams because I am dangerously close to just becoming a crazy pet lady once I have enough space to have them all, because there's just not enough stuff stopping me, so I need to chill. James asks, I'm considering getting into streaming. Uh, any tips to get started for someone who really wants to do it, but is nervous and doesn't know where to begin? So I'd say for where to begin, start by figuring out just like the basic stuff, what your setup is, what your software is, what your software settings are what your stream is going to look like, what your channel is going to be, are you gonna have any channel branding? Just like start with the basic stuff and then figure out what you're going to stream and when. I think those are good places to start and then you have something to start doing and then you can sort of iterate from there. I would also say watch big popular streamers and then figure out what you like about what they do and what you don't like about what they do. Not to just like rip off anybody's stream, but maybe somebody like thanks every follower. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't like that. Maybe they have alerts set up that you like the style of or you don't like the style of. Um, just get a list of things that you like and want to do and uh, work through that first. I would say that if you're nervous about actually streaming, if you have any friends that you hang out with and game with anyways, if they're okay with it, um, try doing your stream while talking with them at first to kind of help you with your nerves so that you have somebody to be talking to. Because talking to yourself is a absolute reality of streaming, especially in early days. And it can definitely be awkward at first, so having somebody to talk to can help. Dragon King asks, do you agree that Blizzard should do more with battle pets? I didn't see any new pet dungeons or battle pet tournaments like Timeless Isle or anything other than some new pets to collect. Do you think they can do other things like a battle pet show, like a dog show with battle pets? So right now, I think that with launch, there is a healthy amount of pet content just because there are so many new pets. There are so many new pets um, and many of them are for pet charms. And that grind is going to take a while, just like getting all of the pet charm stuff is going to take a long time. And I feel like if they had done all of that, plus like a tournament or another type of content, it might've been a little overwhelming, especially with all of the other things going on in an expansion launch that people are also doing. So I feel like for the first patch, it's an okay level of content. And then things like tournaments or more likely a new pet dungeon would make more sense for like 
81, 82, that kind of thing. As far as new types of pet content outside of the things that we already have, I think that it's a fun idea and trying new things is probably good, but there's a right and a wrong way to do it. So if they made like a pet show or up some other kind of totally wacky new style of pet content and they put pet charms as a reward for that, and everybody doesn't like the content, like maybe it doesn't play well, maybe it's exploitable, maybe it's just not a good time for whatever reason. At that point, you feel like you have to do it if you're trying to max out your pet collection because it's a big source of pet charms. So what I would like to see them do is add more of what we've already had, which would be like a pet dungeon for pet charms with some like specific rewards, um, some achievements for some achievement pets, that kind of thing. And then if you're gonna try to do a new type of pet content, I say go for it, but maybe for rewards instead of pet charms or something universal, you could do some of the cosmetic things that Jeremy was talking about in the interview that I did with him back in April. We were talking about how Blizzard now has this new technology for battle pets that allows you to upgrade their appearance, kind of like what we did with Una during the Una quest line back then. So they could add more of that, like more of those pet barbershop style cosmetics and have those as unlock rewards for crazy weird pet content ideas like a pet show of some sort. I don't know about the pet show specifically. I think that Trial of Style works because you can super customize your transmog to a theme. Whereas with a pet show, everybody kind of has almost the same one. Like maybe you have different colors of valley chicken, but there's not really a whole lot of customization there. So I don't know about that one, but maybe I could be surprised. Drock Drauk asks, uh, are there any tea brands or shops you would recommend? Also, what are a few of your favorite teas? All right, so I'm going to rattle off a whole list here. None of these are sponsored. Nobody gives me money or free tea, which is a real shame because hit me up. <laughs> but for authentic Chinese teas, I go to yunansourcing.com specifically for their Chinese black teas and their Chinese puer teas. Really good stuff from there. I have never bought a tea from them that I didn't finish. It's just real good stuff. For authentic teas from around the world, like not just Chinese stuff, but authentic global teas in the US, I like Tao of Tea. They're actually based in Portland, but they do ship um, within US. I don't know if they ship within North America, worth a look, but Tao of Tea for that. If you are in EU, and you're looking for those authentic global teas, um, Wat Cha is the shop of choice there. And then for more inexpensive sort of everyday flavor teas, I like some things from Stash and also Harney. A couple of my go-to teas are Jasmine Green Tea, and I drink so much of that that I buy it in a one pound bag from Stash off of Amazon. A Taiwan Yin Oolong, I have tried a variety of them, they're all good, um, and those can be had from either Yen at Sourcing or Wat Cha or Tao Tea, they'll all have Taiwan Yins, most places will. I like dark earthy show pours specifically from Yen and Sourcing if I'm looking for like a real inky sort of foresty poor tea. And then for flavored black teas, I like the Stash Peach Tea and then the Harney Paris Tea is pretty nice too. Willem asks, I've been trying to record WoW videos myself and one of the issues I keep having is that my mic picks up my keyboard. I've tried noise gating. Um, aside from switching to a quieter keyboard, do you have any tips for audio? So you're already on top of most of my suggestions, which is try noise gating and a quieter keyboard. The other one that I would recommend is depending on your mic setup, I got around a lot of that by using a cardioid pattern mic, which means it is recording sound from directly in front of it, but it's not recording sound from behind it. So you have a cardioid mic and you position it so that your keyboard's behind it. That helps a lot. And then the other thing that actually fixed the problem for me, I don't record gameplay while I record my voiceover. So depending on the style of videos you have, that might just be totally not viable. But the only time I'm ever really playing and recording at the same time mostly is streaming and I have key clicks coming through my stream, but mostly I record WoW video and I record my voiceover completely separately. So I'm not actually using the audio attached to the video most of the time. I hope that's helpful. It's probably not, but that's all I got. So that has been my week. Thank you very much for watching. Merch is all linked in the description. If you have any questions that you would like me to answer on a vlog, please leave it in a comment on the most recent vlog and include the word question in your question somewhere. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.